Hey friends, Ash here with Chin Sense. Hope that you're doing well. Today I've got a video that was requested by one of you guys out there, one of you beast mode gents on my last live stream. So now I'm doing the video. And in case you're unaware of what I'm talking about, the beast mode gents are the most hardcore people on earth. They're great supporters of the channel. And if you want to join the beast mode gents, you can click the little join button below or check out a uh, link in the description. So it's basically channel membership, a bunch of different perks, including early videos, exclusive videos, live streams, all that stuff. So the video request was five fragrances that I've never featured on this channel before. And believe it or not, that sounds a lot easier than it actually is. I thought, oh yeah, it's gonna take like two seconds. And then I started looking through everything and I was like, over the course of a thousand plus videos, I'm pretty sure I talked about that one at least once. But I think, that I have five here that I haven't featured yet. Maybe. So let's jump into it. Let's check these out. Now I'm actually gonna go with six fragrances just to give me a little buffer. So hopefully if I featured one of these that still leaves five that I haven't. And some of these fragrances, it's a real, you know, just catastrophe that I have not featured them before because they're fantastic. And uh, at least one of them, I, I just don't like it all. So I just haven't featured it because I think it sucks. But we'll, we'll save that one for last, I guess. Let's go ahead and jump into this with a fragrance that's not very expensive from a house that I do like, especially for just casual kind of sporty fresh fragrances. It's Lacoste L1212 Red or Rouge kind of matches my shirt today. And I'm not even sure why I haven't featured this one, actually. There are a bunch of L1212 fragrances that I have that I've not talked about. I always end up talking about yellow or white because those ones seem to be my go-to for just kind of a fresh, sporty gem scent. Now this one has ginger, mango, tea, and cardamom as some of the notes in the fragrance. So it definitely has this, this fresh side to it. It's got this little bit of fruit, again, from the mango, giving it a tropical sort of feel, lightly tropical. You got a bit of benzoin in here as well as it dries down. So that gives it this warmth that sits underneath everything else. It's super easy to wear. And it's a fragrance that I think is close to impossible to hate. You may not be blown away by it, but it's really hard to dislike. At the very least, people are gonna be like, yeah, you, sm you smell pretty nice, man, that's not bad. Like most L1212 fragrances, this one is not all that expensive, at least from discounters, really versatile, and it's more suited for spring and summertime use, just as far as the, uh, the seasons go, like most fragrances in that line. So even though I don't talk about it like I do white or yellow, red is still really good. Up next, we've got an Hermes. It's Le Jardin de Monsieur Lee. I don't know how close I came to nailing that, but I feel like I got that at least 70% accurate. Le Jardin de Monsieur Lee. Oui, 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 enfoui de papier. Je suis acheton, je suis américain. This one has kumquat, jasmine, mint, and additional green notes, has a really citrusy feel. And ultimately this is basically just that, citrusy in green, very classy, very easy to wear, very clean. It does not get the same amount of love as some of the other fragrances in this line. And I understand why some of the other fragrances do have a bit more complexity to them. They've got a little bit more going on, maybe come across a little bit more unique, but this one is great for daily use in spring or summer. Once again, we got two spring and summer scents to start stuff off. And this is one of those fragrances that I'm not even sure why I haven't really talked about it all that much. It's like it just kind of falls by the wayside or something. It's gonna be a little bit costly compared to a lot of other designer fragrances out there because it is from Hermes. So even at discounters, it's not gonna be all that cheap, but it's absolutely worth it. The quality here is top notch. Just don't go into it expecting something that's gonna have this enormous change from the opening to the mid to the dry down with all sorts of nuances and complexity and everything like that. Bit of white florals, nice fresh mint, you know, nice fresh mint leaf and kind of a citrusy feeling all throughout. That's what you got. Next up, let's go with this one from Gallagher Fragrances. Perfecto. You gotta love those play on words. Perfecto. Got the notes right here on the bottle. Just easy peasy. Got pear, melon, grapefruit, champaca, patchouli, and driftwood. Now this is one 
that I was actually planning to review uh, like a year ago and then six months ago and then I just haven't done it. So that's my bad. Had it for a minute, more than a minute, a number of minutes. This one has a really big punch to it. You may not expect that because you know it's it's named Perfecto and it has all these these fruity notes in here. You would think it's gonna just kind of be nice and light and easy breezy, but no, nah, it's it's got a pretty hefty punch to it. Good amount of sweetness in there as well. You get this kind of almost. A tropical fruit feeling in the opening, banana, guava kind of deal going on. That melon right there, front and center, and a good amount of pear. This nice kind of crisp pear that helps play along and contrast some of those other more adventurous tropical fruity notes. So you've got this big blast of different fruit notes going on in the opening. Then as it dries down, you pick up a little bit more of that driftwood and a touch of patchouli. Not too much though, just a, just a touch, a smidge. Really well done. I think it stands out from the crowd, especially when we're talking about fragrances that you might wear in high heat situations. But if you do wear that in high heat situations, remember what I said earlier about the performance and, and dial it down a little bit so that you don't brutally slay everybody around you uh, by way of, of nose death. Now this next one was so flippin' cheap for so long. I think that I probably paid $12 for it, maybe $12.99 or something like that. And uh, I checked on discounters before doing this video. Didn't see it up there, sold out. Checked eBay, looked like people were charging the outrageous sum of $25. Actually, I'm gonna go right now just to double check that and make sure I'm not lying to you. $25. $4.99, $28.90, Oh man, ridiculous. For real though, the, the prices, uh, they've gone up. The fragrance is Jeffrey Bean Bowling Green. This is one of the cheapest presentations you will ever see in your life, ever guaranteed. It's just kind of a cheap feeling bottle. <sighs> with a very plain sticker slapped on the front and uh, a cap that weighs one gram and a really old school atomizer. Let's give her the old spray though. It works well. I wish I had the box here as well because the box looks crazy cheap. It's basically just corrugated cardboard, a tube of it. So obviously something's going on with this fragrance. I haven't kept up to date on it, uh, but this used to be insanely crazy, crazy cheap. And now it's doubled in price, like I said, to the massive, massive price of $25. Frankly, though, when you pay $25 and then you get the bottle and it looks like this, you're probably thinking to yourself, did I just get ripped off? This one's got citrus, lemon, verbena, oak moss, and lavender as some of the notes in the fragrance. Got that old school feel to it. Personally, I think it smells awesome. Now, here's the deal, though. I'm telling you it smells awesome. If you don't like especially fragrances with a very Dracar Noir-ish type feel to them, I don't think you're gonna like this. But if you, like me, are a big, big fan of the greatest fragrance ever made, Dracar Noir, you're gonna like this. It doesn't smell the exact same as Dracar Noir, but it definitely is a pledge from the same frat house as Dracar Noir. What would that frat house be? Probably Alpha Alpha Alpha. So Bowling Green for me gets a big thumbs up. Why have I not talked about it? Yeah, I don't know, man. Maybe I just, every time I walk by it, you know, I see it in the collection and it looks so janky and cheap. I keep on walking. Maybe it's because if I'm gonna talk about something with a little bit of a Dracar Noir edge to it, I'm gonna talk about Dracar Noir. But for whatever reason, I haven't really talked about it till now. Now this next one, it's just, it's, it's, it's an abomination that I have not really talked about this fragrance. That's on me. Completely, no excuses, you know? Just feel, feel like I let myself down. I screwed the pooch, you know? I just miss, I messed up, man. But I'm gonna make up for my past transgressions. Journeyman. This is from Amouage, of course, and this stuff slaps. I sprayed some on right here just so I could give it a little, uh, yeah. Yeah, that touched my, my cortex, my frontal cortex, my interior lobe. 
Yeah, I'm just making making stuff up that sounds like brain parts. It touched my cerebellum in a positive way. Got Sichuan pepper, cardamom, tobacco, and leather. That's some of the notes in the fragrance. This one has that amouage flair. It's got that quality. It's got that, that pop to it, that bang, that luxury. And it has that, that sweet, warm, sexy spiciness that I'm drawn to in a bunch of fragrances melding together with tobacco leaf. That's a winner. Fragrance smells fantastic. Absolutely one of the easiest to wear fall and wintertime fragrances from a wash for men. Big attention grabber, great performance. Love the scent. And that one you can find at twistedlily.com. Fantastic store for niche fragrances. If you use my code GENTS10, you'll save 10% off the whole website. This is not a sponsored video, just letting you know. Now we are at the final fragrance, number six. This is the one that I'm uh, just not really a big fan of, which is why I've not talked about it. Sometimes there are fragrances I'm not a big fan of and I will talk about them. I'll say, hey, I hate this. It's an FYI, but this one, uh, it's, it's like it's in some limbo, some fragrance purgatory where I, I don't care to bring it up. I don't like it, but I don't dislike it enough to you know build a video around it necessarily. And I, I don't really ever want to wear it. So I can't really put it into a video where I'm saying, hey guys, this is a good fragrance for this, that, or the other thing. I actually bought this a long time ago one of the first fragrances I got from the house and I was hoping it was going to be a really good kind of just daily wear fragrance maybe a little office fragrance on occasion something like that got a good deal on it got it in sprayed it on mm. just really I didn't like it I, I didn't like it at all Burberry the beat now, traditionally, this fragrance has not been all that expensive. Like I said, I got it for a good deal. So it's not something where I got it in, sprayed it, didn't like it. And I was like, no, no, how could you do this to me, Burberry? It was more so spray it on and go, oh, that kind of sucks. I'm not gonna wear that again. This one's got black pepper, vetiver, citron, some floral notes, additional woodsy notes as well. That pepper, that pepper. That's what kills this one. There are certain fragrances that I've smelled over the years where the black pepper is just overwhelming, just kind of sits over top everything else. You know, it lords over all the other notes and kind of crushes them. It's like it's a, a really evil duke back in the Middle Ages or something. And uh, it just, it subjugates the other notes. It's like, I will defeat you. Citrin, no, no one will smell you. Vetiver, no, only me. Synthetic, unholy black pepper. Well, that's what's going on here in a weird kind of nerdy description. So yeah, basically you spray it on, you get this, this synthetic chemically black pepper that assaults your nose. And, and that's pretty much what the fragrance is to me. You know, that's just burrowed into my brain that the beat equals cheap smelling black pepper that I don't like. Another fragrance that did that only ramped up to 11 was Bang by Marc Jacobs. I got that at TJ Maxx years and years and years ago. I was really pumped. The bottle looks crazy, very unique. And I gave it a spray <laughs> just like, okay, cool, man. You took my pepper cracker, you put a whole bunch of it into alcohol, you let it macerate and you sold it as a fragrance. That's how I felt at the time. I was not a fan. So yeah, the beat, it's just not, not Burberry's best, we'll say that. You can make like a dad pun. The beat will not go on. The beat doesn't go on. The beat is off. Wow, whatever. So there we go, some fragrances I have not featured on my channel until now, I think. Somebody's gonna go through my back catalog, just watch every video and be like, actually, back on November 15th, 2017, you mentioned a Mwaj Journey Man for 15 seconds. Oh, okay, that's that's cool. Again, shout out to the Beast Mode gents. Thank you for requesting this video. You guys requested some other ones that I'm gonna get to here in the near future as well. Shout out to everybody that stayed until the end. Thank you for supporting me. Thanks for hanging with me today. Stay safe out there. See you guys tomorrow with another fragrance video. I can barely say another. Oh, blah, blah, blah. See you later.